Greetings, blessings, much love to you all. Welcome to Nanaba's Kitchen. It is Turkey O'Clock. This video was put together last year. For some reason, I never got around posting and sharing the recipe. So here we are. Enjoy the process. So this turkey is going to be juicy, is going to be cooked through, and it is going to be delicious all the way to the core of it, all right? It's a no-fail sort of recipe, so take notes, please, friends. It will be helpful. So I have this 30-quart stock pot on the stove with water in it, and it's coming to a boil. We are creating a brine starting with these peppercorns, followed by this pink salt, and it's a generous amount, as you can see. And I'm also adding some sugar to it. And the purpose of the sugar in this very salty brine solution is to help the bird to brown evenly. You get a really good caramelized color throughout without burning it if you don't apply too much heat, just the right amount of heat. I have rosemary, sage, and thyme, the perfect trio of aromatics when you're cooking a bird. An extra large onion halved, two bobs of garlic also halved, a bundle of six sprigs of scallions, two oranges halved, and then we have four bay leaves. And that is all she wrote, beautiful people. Stir everything together and remember that the water is hot. So the extraction of the aromatic characters are going to happen right about now. You have two options, friends, to allow this water to come to a cool down temperature. You either let that happen naturally and organically, or you can add some ice. I didn't have much time this day, so I added just a little bit of ice to cool it down. And don't worry, the brine will not become diluted because the ice is also considered as a, an ingredient. So that was factored in when I was measuring all the other ingredients. Now submerge the entire bird into the brine and allow it to brine for 12 hours at room temperature, okay? And take it out afterwards. So it was 6 p.m. the day of brining, and it is 6 a.m. this morning, the next day. Next, I remove the bird and the aromatics from the brine and give the bird a quick rinse, just so that when I apply my butter and my other ingredients that it sticks perfectly to the bird before it goes into the oven. Next, I am stuffing the cavity of the bird with some celery and also randomly selecting some of the aromatics and inserting them into the cavity of the bird, okay? It doesn't matter which one you choose. The purpose of stuffing the bird with these whole ingredients is so that steam is released when the bird is cooking and the steam is going to help the bird to be nice and juicy and not dried out. I have also stuffed the bird with the trio of herbs, the rosemary, sage, and thyme. I'm adding some more orange, and that is it. Now, if you have stuffing and you prefer to stuff your bird with the actual stuffing, then go for it. Now we're going to truss the bird using a butcher's twine. So underneath the bird where the head used to be, I am going to place the butcher's twine and crisscross it to where it's tucking in the wings and going over the crease of the thigh and underneath the tail crisscrossed and then it comes back up and crisscross again around the legs or the drum, okay? And now you're going to secure it by going over and in between both drums a few times until you feel it's secured enough. Crisscross if you need to, and then tie it up. Trusting is tying the bird up with the butcher's twine, and the purpose of that is to keep all the extremities close to the core of the bird so nothing burns and sticks out, and it's also for presentation. We're preparing a herb batter. So into the food processor, I've added some fresh parsley followed by the trio, the rosemary, the thyme, and the sage. Now I'm adding some ginger paste and garlic paste. 
The ginger is optional, but it works here, friends, and I must absolutely have ginger when cooking poultry. I've added some scallions that I've cut up, and I'm also adding some all-purpose seasoning, and you can use a cube of chicken bouillon. Also, don't forget to season. Friends, even though your, your bird has been in the brine, it is not seasoned enough. You must season your herb butter. So I've added some salt, some crushed black pepper is going in right now, and I'm drizzling in some olive oil as well. And I'm going to process this into a semi-smooth paste. Prior to adding your butter, scrape the sides of your food processor to reincorporate the chunks of herbs that did not get processed. And then add two sticks of butter that have come to room temperature and also squeeze in the juice of half a lime or a lemon. The lime juice is going to bring us that much needed balance in the taste, the final taste of the herb butter. And it will also keep the herb butter consistently green and fresh. Now I'm going to be roasting my bird over a medley of vegetables. So I have in my roasting pan some red potatoes, carrots, celery. Spread them out evenly and place your baking rack on top of it. This baking rack is non-stick so the bird will not stick. If yours isn't nonstick, then apply some butter on it, some melted butter to prevent it from sticking. Now, we're smearing the herb butter over the entire bed, and also I inserted a bit of it into the stuffing area and the cavity of the bird. While the turkey was hanging out, it was draining a lot of the excess brine and the skin also became nice and dry. So while applying the butter, it is able to stick to the skin. That's important, friends. If your bird is still wet on the skin, then you must pat it with a paper towel or a kitchen towel that's clean all right see how it's evenly spread throughout it is perfect the bird is entirely coated with the herb butter and it's ready to go into the oven i place it on the very bottom rack for 30 minutes at 450 degrees fahrenheit just so the browning can get jump started all right after the first 30 minutes, I go in and baste the bird with the rest of the herb butter. And then I push it back into the oven and turn the heat down this time to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and cook for three hours. And I check on the bird periodically. I set my timer every hour to remind me to go in and check and see what's going on because if it starts browning too much on certain sections then i can actually put a foil over it or cheesecloth soaked in butter to prevent that browning from occurring too swiftly all right so here it is it's done it took three hours and 15 minutes to cook the bird to perfection, friends. So I go in with a thermometer to check the core temperature and it is perfectly cooked. Also, see that guide right there, that thermometer guide? It is popped out. So that indicates that the bird is cooked to the core and it's safe to eat. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? And also, the vegetables are emerging from that herbaceous butter and the juices from the bird itself. So we didn't need to do much to the vegetables because I know that there was going to be that exchange. The bird released its juices, the butter, the herb butter also melted and joined the vegetables. And now they are cooked through, they are well seasoned, and everything is getting plated. It is ready for that table, friends and family. So if you choose to indulge in a whole turkey, roasted to perfection, 
this is the recipe for you now the juice is here i'm going to reduce it just a little bit so i have turned my stove on and it is a large roasting pan so i turned both of the ranges on and set it on there and allowed it to come to a gentle simmer and then i go in with a slurry of one tablespoon of cornstarch combined with eight tablespoons of water. Pour that in and a whisk or a stir until it is slightly thickened and reduced and then pour it into your gravy boat and you are ready to serve your guests, your family and friends. Friends, I think this recipe came all the way through. You can tell, visually taking a look at this, you can tell this bird is beautiful. It is cooked through, it is aromatic, it is also very tasty, very well seasoned, and the color on it is perfection indeed. This is no pale looking roasted turkey, friends. The color on it is perfection indeed. And it is aromatic. It is tasty, well seasoned, and it is cooked all the way through. So carve your bird and make sure you take that butcher's twine off. Don't set this bird on your table without the butcher's twine removed, friends. That will be a no, no. Although your guests will be forgiving because it is only human to air. So look at this right here, friends. Oh my gosh, how juicy is this piece of turkey leg quarter. Friends and family, I hope you have enjoyed yourselves and have learned a thing or two, and even more importantly, are inspired to try the recipe. This wasn't that hard at all to put together. Yes, sometimes it can seem intimidating to cook a whole bird, but if you follow this recipe, this is what you'll end up with. Juicy, aromatic, well-seasoned bites. Each bite promises you that, friends. Just take a look at that. Beautiful, friends and family. Yes, so this is a must try. So we have carved the dark meat and it was juicy and cooked through. This is the breast and this also is juicy. One of the things that happens most times with uh, a roasting a whole turkey is that the breast tends to be dried out. It was not the case with this recipe. So that's why you must try it. Just take a look. How juicy is that? And it is also very tender, friends and family. Perfection. See that? Breast meat. White meat. Juicy as juicy can ever get. Thank you all so much for watching, friends and family. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in Thank that kitchen. Thank you, beautiful person, for watching the video all the way to the end. Kindly leave me a comment and subscribe down below. And don't forget to share the video as well. Also, watch more videos. It is tough time. And here in Anava's Kitchen, Shop time is always yes friends. So pull up a chair. We are all friends and family here.